Hello, today is November 9th, 2010. We're meeting today with Mr. Howard Nipp at his home in Fort Collins, Colorado. My name is Brad Hoops. I'm the interviewer for the Northern Colorado Veterans History Project. Welcome, Howard, and thanks for sitting down to tell your story today. Well, thank you. Let's start out, if we could. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your date of birth, where you were born, a little bit about your family. Well, I'm born in uh, Napoleon, Ohio. Uh, it's a small town in north northwestern Ohio, about uh, 40 miles southwest of Toledo. Uh, I had one sister that was older than I, and a brother that was younger than I. Um, what, what's your date of birth? I was born July 8th, 1921. Um, I went to school in a little town called Florida, Ohio. Um, it's between Texas and uh, Texas and, and, and Florida. Uh, well, the point, the point, of, or, the point is between te Texas and Florida. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Florida was just a small, small town along the Maumee River. Uh, it was right, right next to uh, uh, Gerda's Island, where I was born. Um, I, I joined the National Guard, so I think it was 1938. So, uh, when you know joined the National Guard, had you graduated from high school then? I was still in high school. Okay. Oh, you're still in high school when you joined. Yeah. 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 Let me interrupt you real quick, Howard, before we continue on with your military uh, aspect. One question I always like to ask, a uh, historical time period then, do you have much memory and was your family affected much by the Great Depression? Oh yeah, I remember the Depression. Yeah, yeah we, we always had plenty to eat though. I, I was lived on the farm, born and raised on the farm, and um, we raised our own meat. And, my mother had a garden, raised her own vegetables. Uh, she, she never, never had spent too much money on groceries. Flour, maybe, and sugar. Uh, cereal. We, we even had cereal for breakfast. Uh, but you skimped along, and everybody was in the same boat. Yeah. yeah. I mean, nobody felt, nobody felt poor. We uh, had our home entertainment. We played. Played a lot of cards. Um, Dad, Dad was pretty good at making games. Uh, this match game where you stick the matches in the board and try to get down to the last one. He made, he made that when I was a little kid. I'll be done. Uh, yeah. So he now he was a farmer by trade. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. continuing on then with your story. Uh, so you joined the National Guard while still in high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What prompted you to uh, to do that? Well, I had a friend that bought the garden, and, and uh, he taught me the joiner. Uh, we, we drilled one night a week, and then in the summertime I would go to camp camp for two weeks. We used to go to uh, Camp Perry, which is a military camp on the uh, on Lake Erie. We trained down there, usually, usually go down there sometime in July. Uh, the the uh, last year that I was in the guard, so instead of going to Camp Perry, they sent us to uh, uh, um, Wisconsin. I can't think of the name of the town anymore. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, but uh, that, that, that was in 1940. And then we were inducted into federal service in the, into the Army in October of 1940. And then we went to Camp, Camp Shelby in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So, so then from the National Guard you were incorporated into the regular Army? Right. It was this part of the, the pre-war draft or...? Uh... Oh yes, yeah. Well, well they, they, they did pass the draft while I was in the in the National Guards. Uh, but at that time, you didn't have to register until you were 21. And my time was up in March of 1940. I had a list for three years. Well, I, I was discharged from the Army 
and my friend had gone to Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, he wanted me to come out there and visit him. I went to I went out to Baltimore. And, well, he he was a little bit older than I was, and his draft number was coming out. Uh, so he said, "Well, I'll go and enlist." I said, "Well, I'll enlist with you." <laughs> <laughs> By this time, you were out of high school, correct? Yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now, at that age, now since you weren't twenty-one, did you have to get your parents to sign uh, papers and such? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah my parents had to sign. Uh, we, we enlisted in Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, they put us on a ferry boat, uh, which was a pretty good sized size boat, and uh, sent us down to Norfolk, Virginia for, for boot camp. And uh, well, when we first went to Norfolk, the time for boot camp was eight weeks. But, they was rushing so many through that they dropped to six weeks, and we were right in between that drop. So, so uh, my boot camp was seven weeks. <laughs> Is that right? And then, then, then from um, after I got out of boot camp, went to uh, electrical school in St. Louis, Missouri. It was uh, had the Hadley's Vocational School, which uh, was four months long, and then we were assigned ships. So let me back up then. So uh, you guys enlisted actually in the Navy then? Yes. Okay. How did you come to choose that service over the other, the other branches? <laughs> well, of course we went to the Army first. Yeah. They found out I'd been in the infantry. infantry and uh, they said, well, we'll just put you right back in the infantry. And I said, no, you won't. <laughs> so we went to the Marines. And the same thing happened, you know, they put you, put you in the infantry. So we went to the Navy. <laughs> we knew the Navy couldn't put me in the infantry. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so were the both of you uh, going off to boot camp and electric school? Were you guys staying together or did you ever? No, no. He, 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 he went to a different school. Okay. Uh, he was a metalsmith. Okay. So when we got out of boot camp, he went, he went to Detroit to school up there, and I went to St. Louis. Okay. Uh, well, when I got out of school, I, went, uh, I was assigned to the uh, USS Regal, which was home, po home port at Pearl Harbor at that time. Uh, we were supposed to ship out December the 8th to go to Pearl Harbor. Is that right? And, but the war started on December the 7th. Right. So they uh, they bumped us off of the the transport. We took supplies. I don't know. Anyway, anyways, we got bumped. Um, so they sent us to San Francisco to catch another transport. Now, did you, uh, so you went cross country, cross country, or did you go by via ship to to San Francisco? Uh, by train. Oh, by train. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, I was in San Francisco for a short time, and we, we, we left uh, we left San Francisco two days after Christmas uh, on, a, you know, on a big transport ship. I don't recall the name of the ship anymore, but there was uh, three or four transports, and, and we had escorts, smaller ships to escort us. Now, how's, how was that for, uh, here's a boy uh, from the Midwest, from Ohio, uh, going out to sea, did you get your sea legs? How did how was that? Uh, how was that that trip over for you? Well, it didn't, really never bothered me. Um, of course, when, when, see, when, when I was back home on the farm there, we were right along the Maumee River, and Dad used to do a lot of fishing, and I was kind of used to being on the water. You know, okay. The, the waves didn't bother me. Okay. But it, it was really amazing. We ran into a storm about four days out of San Francisco and how those big ships would stand up on, on their on their fan tail, you know, and then when they bowed come down they'd look a plop. You know, they had to be strong material to to, to take all that punishment. A lot of guys did get seasick. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> but they tell you to keep on eating, you know. And the guys that eat and <laughs>
Well, when we got to Pearl Harbor, I, I, I went to report to board my ship. There was two of us from from the electrical school that reported to, to the executive officer. And he said, well, he says, I, I need a man down in the fire control game. Well, I didn't even know what fire control was, you know. I thought I was probably fighting the fire. Yeah, but, right. Well, I, that didn't interest me. Well, now, let me, I'm sorry to interrupt you again, but let me ask you, when you went to electrical school, was that something you had a choice of, or were you just assigned to go to electric, electrical school? How did you come to go to electrical school? Well, they give you an aptitude test. Okay. And uh, you were put in certain categories, and uh, that's how I ended up with electrical school. Okay, okay. And let me ask you, while I've interrupted your story, can you describe to us and those that will watch this film what you saw? Uh, three weeks after the bombing, what Pearl Harbor was like, what it was still like when you pulled into there. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there was the holes of the, of the ships that had, the battleships that had been sunk, and they turned over on their sides. Um, oil, smoke, even some of them were smoking yet. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Uh, well, when I went aboard, then the executive said uh, he needed a man in the fire control. Well, neither one of us volunteered. They all tossed a coin, you call it. <laughs> so I called and come up heads, and he said, you go to fire control. <laughs> what but, uh, what ship was that that you were assigned to? USS Regal. Oh, you were back to the Regal, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's when I went aboard the Regal. So now, uh, on December... Uh, was the Regal in Pearl on December 7th? Yes. Oh, it was? Oh, okay. Yeah, in fact, they said a bomb a bomb landed on their fantail, but it didn't explode. It rolled off and went in the water. Wow. Wow. And so they were. And there was a destroyer that had been hit. They were tied up alongside the Regal. Um, so we we got to do some work on the, on the uh, on this destroyer then to get it back in com in commission again. Uh, well, we we were we, we were in Pearl Harbor then. So we stayed there till uh, sometime in late May or first of April, and they sent us down to New Zealand. And uh, we were down in New Zealand for about five months. Auckland, Auckland, New Zealand. Now, during that time you crossed the equator, did you have to go through the uh, shellback uh, polywog uh, ceremony? Well, I guess I was kind of fortunate because when they sent us down to New Zealand, we did not have an escort. We were all by ourselves. Uh, no, really no armament on, on a repair ship. And the, the captain wouldn't disrupt the crew like right, that right, to right. have an initiation. Well, how did you feel about that? I mean, you guys are out there alone uh, with, with Japanese subs in the water. Did that play on your mind at all? Were you guys worried about that at all? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember I had fantail watch at night. We said, sat back there on the fantail and watched them maybe see a periscope. Oh, boy. Yeah. But, uh, well, anyways, we got, to, we got to New Zealand. And then uh, uh, I think about in New Zealand, Late October or November, uh, um, we went up to New Caledonia, which the Navy has a Navy, Navy base there. And, um, um, well, uh, <laughs> eager beaver, you know. I, I, asked, I asked the captain to a, one of those fighting ships, or I, I didn't ask the captain, or chief. I asked the chief about Get, get transferred to one of those fighting ships. Um, well, actually, they had a couple of battles, and sh some of the ships didn't come back, and some of them come back and shot up. I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he didn't. Yeah. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no. No, he, he, he came come down one morning, and he says, uh, I got your transfer. He says, uh, you see that destroyer over there? USS Fletcher. He says, that's where you're going. You got 20 minutes to pack your bag. <laughs> so that's how I ended up on the Fletcher. Uh, Fletcher, 
she was accompanied by the fighting ship. Uh, the ship earned 13 battle stars while I was aboard. Wow. 15 all together. Um, my son Larry was always kind of a um, interested in World War II, and he bought me several books. There's one of them right there. Got all the stories in about the Fletcher, or well, about the destroyer operations. And then there's more over there on the bed that I drug out this morning. Okay. Well, we'll show you if you want to take a look at them. We'll take a peek at them after the interview. Yeah. You bet. So let's. Uh, so now you're on the on the Fletcher. Were you still back in fire control on the Fletcher then as well? Oh yes. Yeah. Now that's gunfire. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I was down in the plotting room and um, helped operate the computer. Uh, it was a mechanical computer. But the way fire control worked, well, you got five. We had five five-inch guns. There's uh, two forward and three aft. Well, uh, you're sighting the target from the director, which is the highest point of the ship. Uh, you got a pointer, a trainer, a range finder. Uh, and of course, they, they track the target, and that information would come down to the plotting room, all go into the computer. And then the computer would you would put the guns in automatic, and the guns supposedly point at the target and hit it. I'll be there. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the ship ship shot down twelve or thirteen planes. I don't know which. And then they were also well credited. Uh, November the thirteenth, uh, hits on a battle wagon with their torpedoes. And uh, the Battle of the 30th, uh, the, um, well, the Battle of the 30th was kind of a screw up. Um, the, the admiral that was in charge wouldn't let them fire the torpedoes when he should have. And um, uh, we lost a couple cruisers that night, and the Fletcher, Fletcher picked up about 650 survivors from the Northampton. Um, was this the, the battles around uh, Guadalcanal? Guadalcanal? Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, well, like I say, I, I went aboard in December, the, in December after these battles were over with, and the Fletcher had come back to New Mia for new war supplies. And uh, that, that, that's when I went aboard then. And of course, we went back up to Guadalcanal, and we had patrol up there. Uh, our, 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 our first um, first assault, I guess, was uh, on a Jap submarine, which we sank. Uh, and then there was planes that come over and pester you. Uh, we got a couple of them. Uh, one of them dropped their bombs one night, and it was so close that it splashed water on the bow of the ship. And we were lucky; he never got hit. Hmm. Wow! By the canal. But then we, we participated in several landings up through the, through the islands there in the South Pacific, and, and all, all the way to the Philippines. And uh, at the Philippines, then, um, well, we went into uh, Lady Lady Gulf. Um, we didn't know what to expect, you know, but it, it uh, was kind of a quiet, quiet operation for us, really. I mean, I think we were lucky some places. Well, we had we had so many ships for that invasion of the Philippines. I just never saw so many ships lined up. That must have been a sight to see. Oh gosh, yeah. And we listened to Tokyo Rose, and Tokyo Rose would say that the, the U.S. Navy has been sunk. They're all on the bottom, you know. 
And of course, she she had the Japs believe in that. Well, it wasn't true at all. <laughs> yeah, know? right. Yeah, it was just the opposite. Uh, but uh, anyways, uh, uh, we we anticipated in uh, several landings around the Philippines, and then in February. Now, what would be the Fletcher's uh, role in this softening the beaches, or how how what would you be your role in these uh, these invasions? Well, both. Uh, we we we'd bombard the beach. Uh, of course, we'd be on the lookout for submarines and also aircraft. Uh, the, a destroyer has more armament for the space than any other any yeah. other warship. Um, we, we, had, we had torpedoes, we had depth charges, we had 5-inch guns, we had 20 millimeter guns, we had 40 millimeter wow. guns. Um, well, we went to, of course we were on the west side of the islands so by this time. Uh, we we uh, helped land troops several places in the Philippines. and. They was going to take Corregidor in February. Uh, I, I got pictures of the paratroopers dropping on, on Corregidor. Um, uh, we were shelling the beach, and then there was a gun emplacement on another island on the opposite side of the ship. And they had a gun, gun emplacement in a cave, and they started shooting at us. And uh, the first two shells fell short, and the third one hit us on the bow. Oh. Uh, we, we we lost seven seven men. Well, now was that up near the plot plot room? Were you anywhere near that where that hit? Uh, not too close. Uh, see, the plotting room is. Practically in the center of the ship. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Where, where this this hit up yeah. uh, on the bow. Oh, okay. Uh, it hit under, underneath one number number one gun mount. Um, the gun captain was killed, and a couple boys in the in the gun turret were killed. Uh, well, one fellow lost his arm. Mm. Uh, and what did that when that hit the ship? What what were you guys feeling back in the plot room? I mean, it was a pretty good jolt for you, or well, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, and then the uh, see the, the the shrapnel went down into the handling room and down into the magazine. Oh boy! The magazines where they stored the yeah. gunpowder, right? And it started to fire down there, and uh, one of the fellows that had. Uh, grabbed the fire extinguisher and jumped down into the magazine and put the fire out. Wow, oh, wow. Uh, but uh, he probably saved the ship. You know, I mean, it's a magazine that blew up, why it probably blew the ship apart. Uh, but but he, he, he inhaled that smoke from the gunpowder and it, uh, well, he died the next day. Mm. Mm. Uh, actually, they, they named they named the ship after him. Uh, they named some buildings after him as Annapolis, thirty uh, third greatest naval naval hero. Wow! Uh, of course, his mother got the Navy Cross. I think it was. And the Purple Heart. Well, any, anyway, uh, we 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 trained our well, two and guns two and three were out of commission, uh, but we still used the after guns, and we blew the cave up where where, where that gun emplacement was. Uh, so we settled that. <laughs> yeah. uh, and well, we got the we got the damage repaired aboard ship then, and after well, Corregidor, 
we went down to Bardio and helped land troops on Bardio. So you guys never were taken out of the battle for repairs? You, you did repairs we, on board and just kept going? We did it ourselves. Wow. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we got the gun back in, back in commission. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, then, uh, well, after Barney O, then we decided to, uh, to send us back to the States for an overhaul. Uh, things were getting pretty, the gun barrels wouldn't even shoot straight anymore. <laughs> So we we come back we come back to the states in uh, June June of I think it was June of forty five and, uh, and then I got this well I I got transferred to uh, to Annapolis Maryland and to Advanced Fire Control School and uh, hopefully as you as you were transferred that allowed you some time to stop at home did you have a, a leave to come home for a little bit yeah okay oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in, in fact, uh, that, I, met, um, I met my wife when we came back. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, uh, we, we, got, we got married in uh, Long Beach, California. And then we went to... Now, was she an uh, Ohio girl or did you meet her out in California? <laughs> I met her out in California. Actually, she was from Chicago. <laughs> uh, but, we, we got married then in, in uh, Long Beach, California, and went to Washington, Washington D.C. for Advanced Fire Control School, uh, which was a six-month course. Uh, and then from the war ended during the during the time I was there. Do you remember that day when VJ Day? Do you remember where you were, and was there any sort of celebration or? Oh, right, they went wild in Washington. They turned streetcars over. And, I'm crazy. Yeah, wow. I turned cars over. Well, it was it was ridiculous what, what the people did. Huh. Uh, but, but anyways, uh, after after school in Washington D.C., I, uh, I I got assigned to Annapolis, Maryland, uh, which was the USS Regal, or not the Regal, but the uh, Freedom Mercedes, I believe it was. Shoot, I don't know. I have to look at my discharge, make sure I forget the name of it. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but anyways, see, I, 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 I signed up in the Navy for six years. Uh, and my time was up in 1947. So that's, that's when I got discharged. Now, when you went to Annapolis, were you there uh, for, to, to teach? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Teach the midshipmen, which was kind of hard to do. Yeah. yeah. They knew it all. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me back up. Uh, so you got your discharge in 47 after six years in the service. Let me back up. Let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, being back in the Pacific. Talk a little bit about what life was like on the ship as far as... Uh, uh, the food, uh, your your sleeping quarters, what you guys did uh, when you weren't in uh, on on duty. Just general, describe just what life was like on the, on the ship. Well, you, know, you had you had a watch. We stood uh, you was on four hours. You had eight hours off, uh, but they dog what they call they dog the the uh, afternoon watch the four. Four, instead of four to eight, you, you still watch four to six, and then six to eight. And that way the watches would always rotate. <coughs> uh, when you were off watch, you had certain duties to, to do. We, we'd have to check out the guns, the gun mounts, see, see that the drives were working properly, check out the equipment, see, see that the equipment's working. Uh, Always a little repair work to be done. Uh, spare time, well, I learned to play chess. <laughs> uh, a friend made a friend from Cleveland. His name was Mike Reed, uh, which was, we stood watch together a lot of times. 
and, he, and he, he was a chess player, and he taught me how, but I could never win from him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I could never win. As far, as far as the food, we, we, we had a real good commissary steward. Uh, he, fed us, he fed us real good. Uh, <clears throat> we had plenty to, plenty to eat. Uh, uh, you go through the chow line and, and uh, they'd give you as much as you wanted. Uh, but the, it was commissary steward would stand at the exit hatch. And when you left the commissary, you didn't have any food left on your plate. You, you, you had to eat every bite that you took or you didn't, wasn't supposed to take it. Uh, you, you, didn't, you didn't like to see food go to waste. Yeah. Uh, he was a tall, skinny guy. When we get into port to get new supplies, he'd, he'd go over to the supply ship and he'd beg, borrow, and steal, I guess, to get good food. And he was so skinny, the guys always feel quite sorry for him. Boy, they, they're not getting enough to eat, you know. <laughs> he was a tall, tall, skinny guy. Was there anything, as I've done a lot of these interviews over the years, there was always, uh, guys always talk about something they craved that they couldn't have until they got back home. Was there anything that you missed from home or craved uh, once you got back home when you were at sea? Well, you know, I, 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 I never uh, can say I craved anything really. Uh, but I never liked tomatoes. Uh, but then when I come back from overseas, they taste so doggone good. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, when I was at home, kid, I, I never, never cared much for tomatoes. Well, my mom used to uh, cook them up in, into a soup, you know, and that was good. I liked that. But to eat a raw tomato, it just didn't appeal to me. Ah, I'll be darned. And after not having any for a couple of years, well, they tasted pretty good. <laughs> How about uh, sleeping quarters? What were what were sleeping like? And did you get plenty? You felt like you got plenty of sleep? Oh yeah, yeah, I got plenty of sleep. And, well, our, our bunks, are, uh, my bunk was in the forward forward compartment, and uh, they were stacked three three high. And uh, in, in fact, uh, the day we were got hit, we, the shrapnel came through and knocked a bunch, a bunch of insulation loose, and my bed was was full of fiberglass. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so so I, I, I cleaned my bed off. Well, it wasn't full, but it had a lot yeah. of it. And you know, I, I never thought the guy on the top bunk, I was in the middle bunk. And the guy on the top bunk, he he had, he was on watch when I went to bed. He got off watch. He came down and turned and flipped his mat. Oh and no! <laughs> he dumped all that down on me. <laughs> oh, no. uh, so I, I'm assuming your your general your general quarters was the plot room then. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And how about uh, as you guys? You know, it sounds like you you sailed throughout the Pacific and stopped at these various islands and ports, uh, were you able to get shore leave? And, and what was that like, once again, here's a farm boy from Ohio in these exotic locations. <laughs> what was that like for to experience something like that? Well, from what I remember about the islands of the South Pacific, um, they're hot and sticky and Guadalcanal. Um, well, I, ne I never, did, never got ashore in Guadalcanal. Uh, went around the place a lot of times. Um, yeah, I was on New Guinea, uh, but there were so many soldiers around. Um, you didn't didn't even see any natives. Um, the navy's got a rule that you can't consume any liquor aboard ship, but we they did ship us beer, but uh, we'd have to get off the ship to drink it. So they did give each of us a can or two of beer, and then we'd have to go over on on shore, or go out in the whale boat, uh, <laughs> and, and drink our beer. <laughs> uh, did you have a favorite uh, 
port of stop uh new zealand any of those other places was there a favorite place that you you look back now and, and someone enjoyed or well new zealand was probably a favorite spot yeah. but then we, we, we never got down there when i was on the fletcher we, we, we did go down to uh, sydney australia uh, for r and r rest and relaxation uh -huh. and we got down there uh, I don't know, I think it must have been 43, sometime in 43 or 44, that we went down. The, the days kind of all run together. Sure, oh, one, absolutely. Yeah. One, one day was almost like another. Yeah. In, in, in fact, uh, one, one, one year, uh, I, I was in a chess game, you know, and you'd skip meals. You know, you wouldn't always go to every meal, and we weren't going to go to lunch that day. You know, the guy come back and says, you better go down, to, better go down for dinner, it's Thanksgiving, and they got turkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really had no idea it was Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, no, we didn't know it was Thanksgiving. <laughs> how, how was that as far as being away from home for the holidays and such? I mean, was there any, did you ever have any, any homesickness at all, experience any of that, or how did that play for you? Well, actually, you were out there for a while. I, I don't know. You were just one of the boys, and yeah. everybody else was there too. Uh, I think the worst time. Well, we came back. I told you before. We came back in December, December '43 for an overhaul, and we had um, oh seven day leave. Well, you can't do much in seven days. Right. Right. Uh, uh, well, I guess everybody flew home and right back again. But after, 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 it was part, part of that was the hardest part was to, to leave the states in in, uh, in forty three. Uh, but after you're out sea for a couple months, you know, you, uh, you get over it. Yeah. Yeah. How how was communications back and forth from home? I mean, you guys are traveling all over the place. Was mail pretty consistent, or how was how did that work? Well, have you, have you ever heard of V mail? Uh huh. Well, please explain to those that watch us what V mail is. Well, they photographed the letters. Everything was censored. Mm -hmm. The mail coming in, the mail going out was all censored. And V mail, they made photostatic copies and reduced it down in size. And then they, you just got a copy of the of the of their letter. And my, my amazing, my grandmother uh, sent me a letter, and she had her address where my address should be, and I got that letter. Huh. <laughs> the post office did a darn darn good job. Yeah. 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 Uh, but mail was mail was getting to you as as far as I mean it wasn't like you were in one set location you guys were constantly on the move mail would catch up to you guys pretty consistently or well sometimes you go three two three months without any mail you know I mean uh, you didn't always get into port and uh, um, If you had mail in that port, where they would they would send you a message that there's mail here for the Fletcher, and uh, I, I remember one 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 time we were in in a convoy. The captain asked permission to go in and pick up the mail, and whoever was in charge wouldn't gain permission. He said, "Hell with you! I'm going anyways." Oh wow! <laughs> wow! So so we were, we went and picked up our mail. Did. Uh, did your, your, your mom ever talk about after, after you got home, I mean, you said your mail was censored, so you couldn't, obviously couldn't tell them where you were at, uh, coupled with there's big gap, big gaps in time between letters. Uh, she must have worried about, about you. Did she ever talk about her feelings how, while you were basically in harm's way all those years? No, not too much. No, yeah. No, no. Um, I guess she thought about it, you know. Every other mother would. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, my younger brother, he had to go into service then too, and he joined the Marines. And he was in Quantico, Virginia, 
And of course, he was trained to invade Japan. So uh, when the war ended, well, that that's fortunately for that. Yeah, yeah that would have been a tough a tough yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of casualties. Yeah, yeah. Because the Japs wasn't going to give up. Yeah. You know, they fight to the last last person. Yeah, right. How was that? I mean, uh, when you first heard about the atomic bombs being dropped, did you have any sort of a concept or idea what these things were? And I mean, when they talked about the destruction, I mean, could you understand what these bombs were all about? Or what were your thoughts when you heard about the, the atomic bombs? Well, see, I was in Washington, D.C. Right. at yeah. the time. Um, just a big, powerful bomb that's... Yeah. Blew up the whole city. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And one, one last question back on the ship. Uh, in addition to mail, were you guys in, in, in getting communications about the rest of the world outside of uh, distorted uh, Tokyo Rose broadcasts? Were you getting other news as far as uh, word back home, how the war was going, uh, World Series scores? I mean, how were you getting your, your news or were you getting any news? Well, Time Magazine put out a magazine with no ads. It was a condensed, they had everything in it but, but their ads. And, and we get copies of it, which would keep us up, to, pretty well up to date on what was happening. And, uh, well, of course, they had radio. Uh, the word, word of scuttlebutt, was the word to get around, usually what, what was going on. <coughs> And how big of a crew, roughly, was the Fletcher? Uh, about three, 320, roughly speaking. And, yeah. and through the years, have you ever attended uh, any uh, Fletcher reunions or kept in touch with buddies that you served with? Well, they had a reunion every year. Um, I've, I've been to a few of them. Um, I haven't, I haven't been to one lately because the, the uh, crew from the Vietnam area was kind of carried on. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, the, the World War II crew, uh, well, a lot, a lot of them are deceased mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and a lot are disabled. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there, there aren't too many World War II veterans that go to the reunions anymore. Right, right. Now uh, the, the Flesher has a couple websites. Uh, in fact, I, 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 I went off some pictures last night. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you can take those along and look them over if you want to. So after the war then, it wasn't decommissioned. It went on to serve, uh, probably I'm assuming, Korea and then Vietnam then, huh? Uh, well, yes, um, it, it, it was put in mothballs though for a while, and then, and then they, I guess they took it out during the Korean War, and uh, I, actually they changed it over to a DE, a destroyer escort. escort. Uh, <clears throat> they, they were coming coming out with, uh, well, it, they, they had 175 of the Fletcher class destroyers. Um, we lost 18, 18 of them during the war. Wow. Uh, wow. And they had kind of scheduled the Fletcher to be used as a museum, uh, but to change it back to its original configuration uh, it was kind of out of the question, I guess. So they ended up scrapping, mm. scrapping the Fletcher. There are three Fletcher class destroyers uh, that are museums. The one in Buffalo, New York, which named the Sullivans after the Sullivan book. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's one in Buffalo, New York, and uh, uh, Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, Have you ever had a chance to visit any of these and take family and show them a little bit about? Well, yeah, we had the reunion 
one year at, at uh, uh, Louisiana in, in Baton Rouge. And of course that was one of the excursions that are the trips to, to visit the, the uh, ship that was on display there, mm. museum. Um, Through the years, have you ever had a chance to uh, go back and, and visit uh, both either stateside or overseas, any of the places that you, you served? Uh, any chance to travel to? No, no. Yeah. well, the only place I ever went back to was uh, Annapolis. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Annapolis and Washington, D.C. You know, my, my, my daughter was working in Washington, D.C. then for a while. And of course, we went to see her. And, and then while we were there, when we went back up to Annapolis, uh, it's changed. Yeah. You know, like yeah. everything else. Washington, D.C. is altogether different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, let's uh, talk a little bit now about your post war years. So you, you're discharged in 47. Uh, take your story from there. Well, I was interested in electronics and uh, I was studied radio then, and television, and then I uh, did television repair for a while. Uh, I got, uh, well, I got, they started making them, uh, printed circuits and all that stuff, and you almost had to specialize in a certain brand, because you could wrap a lot of money up in spare parts and never use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, they start making sets bigger. Uh, you know, it always takes two men to pick up a set. Uh, you know, the first ones were table models, and yeah. you could yeah. you could pick it up and walk off with it. You know, uh, so I, 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 I kind of got out with that, and then I went into well, worked for a vending machine company, uh, which was a pretty pretty. Pretty big outfit. I mean, considering, and that's that's where I worked in when I retired. How many years did you put in there? Uh, about fifteen, I guess. Yeah. Now, did you guys after uh, Annapolis? Did you return back to Ohio or California, or where did you guys settle? Settle to live. Well, after I got out of out of the navy, we went back to Ohio. I, I lived in Ohio all my life. Okay. Okay. And then what brought you here to Colorado? Uh, well, my two, I have two sons here in Colorado. Um, and then. One, 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 one son came out, the oldest son came out about 1970. Uh, when he graduated from college, right, he, he took a job with the uh, um, accounting firm, uh, Haskins and Sells, I believe it was. And he, he worked for them until he had to go in to go into service. And while he was he was in Denver, uh, while he was in the service, he decided he wanted to go back to college and get his doctor's degree. And he applied here at uh, CSU, and they, they they accepted him. So he he came to Fort Collins. Okay. Uh, and the other, the other son, well, he he. Studied electricity. He's an electrical engineer, design engineer, and um, uh, he co op with IBM. So he uh, out of school. He worked for IBM for a while, and uh, uh, then he went into the RF energy part of it. And he saw an ad in the, one of their trade magazines for. Um, um, oh shoot, I can't think of the name of the company out here. It's a Fort Collins company. Um, but then anyways, he, he worked for them then for quite a few years and then he had his own, had his own shop, his own business. And then um, I started a solar panel and the guy that was is one of the backers of the solar panel uh, knew him from his previous job 
and he wanted him to come to work on the solar panels. So that's that's what he's doing now. Oh, wonderful. So you've got the two sons and a daughter? I've got three daughters. Three daughters. Three, three daughters, two sons? Right. And yeah. any, any staff at how many grandchildren, great-grandchildren? About 13 grandchildren. And any any great? Oh yeah, four. <laughs> four. Well, three, three, three great grandchildren. And then, how long were you and your wife married? Well, she passed away in nineteen nineteen eighty three. We got married in forty five. Uh, so just short of what forty miles or forty years? Well, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she she got cancer. And oh boy. And what was her name? Laverne. Laverne. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, go ahead. The daughters are Bonnie. <laughs> Bonnie, Corrine, and, and Becky. And they live uh, throughout the country, or anybody anybody nearby? There's a well. Be, 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 Becky lives in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Bonnie lives in California, and Corrine lives in Michigan. Oh, so you're <laughs> spread out. <laughs> yeah, they are spread out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, well, Howard, uh, we'll, we'll start to wind down this interview. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you wanted to talk about or any stories that have popped up in your mind as we were talking here that you'd like to talk about so that hopefully we round out uh, your experience as best we could? Well, my daughter wrote a poem about the, about the Fletcher. Uh, you might incorporate that. In. Okay. I'll let you grab that. Oh, there's, there's a poem that I got to know. Hmm. Would you like to read it, or I can? Would you want me? To, I'm going to incorporate it into the into the tape for for sure. However, yeah. you'd like like it then. But we definitely want to add this to the to your final DVD. Let me make a copy of it, Doctor. It seems to me that I couldn't find any other copies okay. besides that one. Well, if I could borrow this, then I'll return it. I'll return oh. it back to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And there's some of the battles. How how was it? Uh, in, like I said, we'll start to wind down this, but uh, something I'm always interested in. How was it when you're in the thick of battle? What's that like for somebody like myself? That's Never were been anywhere near battle. What uh, what's going through your mind? What are you thinking as as you're under attack? And was there any time any one of these uh, what thirteen battles that you're in that you, you thought, boy, I'm not sure we're going to make it? Uh. <laughs> well, you you were glad to see the sun come up in the morning. Mm. Wow. Wow. Uh, well, what will be will be. Yeah. 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 Uh, nothing else you could do to change it. Right. I mean, you fight to defend yourself, you defend the ship. Uh, and one last question I always like to, to ask as I finish off these interviews. That time period that you spend in the service and were, were at, at, at sea, did that, how did that play a role in your life, affect your life, change your life at all? Or was it just simply a, a chapter of your life that you went through? How would you how would you answer that? It probably changed my life. Yeah, give you a different outlook. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm bound to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Certainly. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're not, after six years, you're not going to be the same. You have the same attitude about things that you had when you went in. Right. Right. Uh, did, did your family or your folks, anybody comment on that? Did they see a changed person when you came back, do you think? Did they ever my, see? My, my sister mentioned that she was the only one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. Well, in closing, is there any sort of statement uh, 
uh, you would like to make to friends or family that will watch this video to, to finish this off or not? No, I think we pretty well covered everything. You know, okay. Um, don't have too much more to say about it. But okay. Whatever, whatever conclusion they come to. Like Larry, Larry, Larry has probably followed my military career more than any of the rest of them. Uh, uh, he's had a few experiences. Uh, 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 well, uh, I think it was uh, I, IBM, I believe it was, was making a film about the war, and um, they had this uh, uh, pilot from World War II uh, verified some of the things they were doing to make it authentic, and uh, where Larry was visiting there or something, sightseeing, I don't know, and he got to talking to him. And here it was a pilot that we had rescued from the... Is that right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Campbell. His name was Campbell. I'll yeah, be there. He, 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 his plane was... Uh, well, he, had a, he ditched his plane, and then we, we picked him up out of the sea, and... Uh, kind of a small world. Yeah, yeah. oh, absolutely. I'll yeah. be darned. Yeah. Uh, now, was uh, was your war experience, was it something you would talk about with the family, or, or if asked, or how, how was it? I know some people preferred never to talk about it. How were you with uh, with your family in that regards? Particularly, probably Larry, I imagine, was very inquisitive. Well, not, not, not too much. Yeah. Um, Explain to them how the gunfire control works, you know, about the director and, and uh, how everything was uh, controlled automatically from the computer. Uh, so we, we even had, uh, had what they call a stable element, uh, which is a gyroscope, and it, it would as the ship pitched and rolled, it would stay on a steady keel. And, and of course, the, the guns, if they were automatic, well, the, the guns would, the gun barrel would stay stationary, even though the ship was rolling underneath it. Mm -hmm. Wow, so it sounds like the technology, you guys had advanced technology for that day, in that day. I think we did, yeah. 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 I, I think it was uh, pretty far, of course, now, now they, they got a lot better. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 But, uh, I went aboard the uh, North Carolina. Uh, they got museum. They made a museum of the North Carolina. Uh, their big gun turrets uh, had as much equipment in it. One one gun turret had as much equipment in it as what we had. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was surprised how uh, 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 had its own computer. It was it was actually a uh, well, they got the sixteen-inch guns, uh, three of them, three guns in each turret, and they had a big range fighter, bigger than ours, and they had uh, computer. And, and, that's, that's one thing that always amazes me as I interview you guys, not only in the military, but just life in general. Every, everything you've seen in your lifetime, the advancements you've seen in your lifetime is just amazing. Oh, from, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it makes you wonder why it'll be another hundred years. Yeah, right, right. Wow. Yeah. How was that when you left the military uh, as far as uh, the adjustment going from military life to civilian life? Was that much of an adjustment for you after all the six years and what you'd been through? and and were you able to put all the memories that you had behind you? I mean, was there any sort of, you know, they talk about post-traumatic syndrome nowadays. Uh, did you have any experiences in that regard, or were you able to transition pretty good from... I, I, well, I don't know. My, my, my wife said I used to wake, wake up screaming once in a while. Uh, uh. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. It, uh, 
I, I, I think the second tour of duty, uh, you got thick skin and, and you just took everything as it came. Yeah. I mean, the for the first time, when you go back to the States and uh, see people's reaction and everything, uh, uh, and then the second time you went out, why you, you, you felt a little more at ease. All your, all your buddies were out there fighting too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my cousin, my cousin was in the Marines and he, he was on Iwo Jima. Mm. Uh, he, won, he won the Silver Star. Wow. He, ne he never mentioned that. Uh. I, no, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know he had the Silver Star until after he passed away. Is that right? Yeah, he, wow. Yeah. Uh. Well, Howard, I want to thank you for sitting down to tell your story today, but more importantly, I want to thank you for your service to our country. Well, thank you. Can you describe this picture for us, Howard? Uh, what? Tell me what this picture is. Well, it was taken with the ship's camera. Um, they they took pictures of all the ship's crew, uh, the, the different gangs, and it's on the website. Um, uh, there's two two different websites too, um, so you might try to find find both of them. Okay. Uh, um, now, where are you in this picture? I'm lower right-hand corner. This is you right here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can you describe this picture for us, Howard? Well, I was... Uh, we, we, we shelled the beach. But there was so darn many caves on Corregidor. Uh, you, could, you couldn't get at them. And the paratroopers, uh, they, they dropped real low, and, and um, some of the guys never made it down. You know, I mean, the, the Japs were shooting at them. And then uh, uh, it was a hard, hard struggle for. for for those paratroopers to take the island. So the, the specs in the picture are, are the actual paratroopers in. Right. So you guys had a, a, a pretty good front row seat to the battle then, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, blowing up the gun in the cave that the gun was in that uh, hit us with that six inch shell. Mm. 